Why hello there friends, it's Emma here, the Bookish Princess, and I've shared many, many reading vlogs here on my channel over the years, but today I am so, so excited to share my first ever writing and illustrating vlog. I've been working on The Book of Cymbeline. It's going to be coming out as an ebook on Friday, September 16th, and in today's vlog, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes, give you some sneak peeks, a cover reveal. Let's do it. You guys have probably heard me mention this writing project here and there over the past couple of months, but we're really in the home stretch now. In case you don't know, Cymbeline is a play by Shakespeare, also an ancient king of Britain, and also my cat, who uh, showed up as a tiny, tiny kitten in the tree hollow right outside my farmhouse. She actually showed up one year ago today on September 2nd, so it's very appropriate to be posting this vlog today. A year ago, I knew absolutely nothing about cats. Zero. Never owned a cat and did not expect to find a kitten. From the very beginning, Cymbeline just had so much personality. There was a lot of good material for a story there. I mean, just the premise, the kitten in the tree hollow, feels like something straight out of a storybook. So I thought, you know what? I should make it into one. This is going to be a cheerful and charming quick read. It's looking like it's gonna be just shy of 7,000 words. And there are going to be 12 illustrations, probably 12, maybe 13. Either an even dozen or a baker's dozen um, illustrations to go with it. It's gonna be a fun pick-me-up kind of story that I think adults will enjoy, cat lovers will definitely enjoy, children will enjoy. I guess you could think of it or describe it as a children's book, although I didn't write it specifically for children, and especially when you're thinking about like reading level and vocabulary, you would have to have a very advanced young reader um, to read it alone, and even then they'd probably end up looking up a lot of different words, which, you know, hey, when I was little, I loved books where I was learning new words and looking things up. Words I was unfamiliar with always lent a kind of magic to, to the story. I definitely think it would be great as like a read aloud bedtime book um, for parents to read to their kids, for families to read together. And this is actually just going to be the first part. I am planning to make it a series. The full title is The Book of Cymbeline, A Kitten Story from Summer to Fall. So I'd really like to do from fall to winter, from winter to spring, finding Cymbeline just at the shift of the seasons at the very beginning of September was just such a fun and evocative seasonal experience. Um, and her growth really went with the season. So I think it'd be fun to kind of time the stories that way. So yes, hopefully this is just the first installment and there are going to be more to come. It is just going to be an ebook for now. I would love to get it out as a print book, but I need to do some more research and figure out the best way to do that. The ebook I'm uploading to Kindle, so it'll be available through Amazon on your Kindle. I'm thinking I'll price it at like $2.99. So, you know, the price of a cup of coffee. Not a big, uh, not a big investment, but hopefully plenty of enjoyment. Getting out my first work of fiction is just so excited and something that has been a goal of mine for a long time. Obviously, it's based on a true story, and it follows the true story extremely closely, but I can't actually see into Cymbeline's mind, which in the story, as you'll see, the narrator can, can tell you what Cymbeline is thinking and feeling. Yeah, so as the writer, I was doing my best to interpret and imagine my kitten's thoughts. Unfortunately, I don't, don't know them. <laughs> So we are gonna, gonna call it fiction. But it has been so rewarding to, you know, settle down and really follow this idea for a story through to completion because I've always loved to write, ever since I was really little, and, and that's a passion that has stayed with me. And of course, I have done lots of writing in various forms here on the internet. I've done blogs and trip reports, um, and obviously with social media and YouTube, storytelling and writing is a huge component in that. Earlier this year, I started a blog over on Substack. It's book princess.substack.com because I really wanted to give myself a space to write more and to encourage myself to put out more writing. I've always had so many different story ideas, but I've never really sat down and, you know, chased one down until it was finished. 
If you love to read, as many of you do, um, you maybe also like to write. And when I read about my favorite authors writing about writing, they have such a great sense of discipline and so much organization. Um, and that was really what I thought was lacking and what I've been um, trying to work on this year. I talked about this in my morning routine video that I posted um, back in the spring. Alas, I have not woken up at 5 a.m. every single morning throughout the spring and summer, but I think having that routine has helped me to definitely move my wake up uh, time earlier in the day and to have that hour before I go off to my you know normal full-time job my nine-to-five to pursue different creative projects and I don't always use that morning time uh, to write sometimes I've used it to to do videos because my channel is obviously another big creative hobby of mine usually I'm working on my hobbies in the evening but I realized that when I'm staying up late to finish something it's usually because because I'm really down to the wire and it just needs to get finished. Whereas if I'm waking up early to work on something, then I'm getting a head start on it. It's probably not, you know, due right away. I have some time. It's been really great to work on that writing discipline, that writing habit with the book of Cymbeline and just chip away at it bit by bit, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening, sometimes on the weekends, I'll sit outside, Cymbeline will sit with me. I'll have my laptop out. Uh, typing away. So yes, I have the writing part, the manuscript, um, the story basically complete. I have, I think, 11 um, drawings which are not quite complete. They definitely need some work. And I do want to go back over the manuscript again. I sent it to some family members um, to get them to proof it for me and to get their reactions. naughty cat she knows she's not allowed on the countertops and she never tries to jump up on the countertops but in a sort of a getting around the letter of the law I just now see her jump up in fact did she make the leap she I, she almost made the leap all the way up she might have briefly touched by the by the kitchen sink this is just so funny because she's like okay well I know I'm not allowed on the countertops but I bet the window ledge is fine, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
So I've just been reviewing um, my family's feedback. They are very kindly being my editorial team. Um, and the pink things are what they liked. The yellow things are suggestions of things to rethink or change. And it's actually really helpful because there are often sentences that I knew weren't quite right, but I wasn't entirely sure how to fix it. And so having them say, okay, well, what about this phrase or this you know, word can be gotten rid of or maybe change this word. So like I really wanted to capture the setting of Cymbeline's arrival and the timing because summer is changing to fall, the month is changing, the weather is changing, and I didn't quite have it. Like this is too long. The fall was eager to step in with a tempestuous arrival and remind everyone that the warm days were drawing to a close. Like that's the idea, but it's too long. So it was really helpful to have them identify some things. So what I ended up with was Fall was eager to elbow in and tempestuously remind everyone that the warm days were numbered. I think that's a lot stronger. It's so helpful to have a second or third pair of eyes um, to just help you out and like fix those little things that you know you had the whole manuscript, but like now it's kind of going in and fixing just those little those little parts that could be just a little bit better. Did you want to sit down there? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm having my dinner outside tonight. I have a lovely quiche that I used, the pepper that I grew in my garden. I put it in the quiche. I've just had so much fun um, with my garden this summer. Um, and it's so rewarding to actually use the produce that you grew. Speaking of my garden, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to water today because it seems like it might rain. I wish it would make up its mind so that I could decide whether or not I should water the plants. Especially on golden evenings when, you know, I get home from work and the weather is beautiful and the garden just looks so lovely. It is hard to motivate myself to go inside and sit down at the computer to work on my book. But I have somewhat solved that problem. I've dedicated a notebook to the book of Cymbeline. So whenever I'm not at the computer, I might write out part of the story that I'm thinking about or that I have in mind or just like lists for organization of what illustrations I need, what which ones are gonna go in which chapter. I sketched out some kind of brainstorms for the cover. I don't think this is gonna work. I think it would be really pretty if like the vine could form the C in the Book of Cymbeline, but um, I don't know. I feel like the number one thing with a title on a cover is it has to be readable. And I feel like the vine is artistic, but not necessarily readable. So need to do some more brainstorming um, and figure out the cover exactly. It's hard to miss the golden evenings, but I enjoy this kind of windswept um, storm coming evening as well. This is exactly what the weather was like a year ago when Cymbeline arrived. In fact, there's her tree right there, which the vine, there was a really majestic vine coming from down from the ranches and that vine did not reach such um, beautiful proportions this year, but it was there to tempt and taunt Cymbeline 
um, when she arrived last year, so that was fun. And the vine is a character, sort of, <laughs> a feature in the book. It's been so fun to go back and like look at my pictures and rewatch my old videos and remember what it was like, put myself into the mindset of when the kitten had just arrived and I just was so clueless. And it was like so delightful, but also so terrifying, both at the same time. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up my quiche, do a little more brainstorming, and then head inside before the rain breaks <laughs> and get to work. I'm happy to report the illustrations have been coming along really well. As you can see, I start out with a little pencil sketch and then I go in with these colorful Tombow markers. Um, and then the last step is going to be to go in with a brush, a wet brush, um, to just soften the lines. I want Cymbeline to stand out and everything else to be very gentle and soft and watercolor. In my August reading vlog last week, I promised a cover reveal. I initially thought um, I would use one of the illustrations as the cover, this pretty one with um, Cymbeline in the Tree Hollow, but I realized that I needed a little bit more space for the title, and I wasn't sure that was really the perfect Cymbeline sketch, so I decided to just assemble my favorite elements from other paintings and other drawings. I think the tree came out pretty well, reasonably true to life. So drum roll please, I decided to go with this little Cymbeline. She's just so cute. I experimented with the other, but 
I, I, I think I love um, our sweet little looking up the Zimbeline and then I can pop the, the vine in there. Very important, obviously. And last but not least, the title. And I experimented with different fonts, but I couldn't find one I liked, so I ended up just hand lettering it. So I will probably fuss with this a little bit, um, but essentially, basically, this is the, the final cover. I am really pleased with it, and I'm so pleased with the way the book has turned out. I cannot wait to share it with you all. September 16th, make sure you grab a copy on Kindle. I will, of course, share the link here on YouTube and Instagram. And in the meantime, I'll be posting some fun sneak peeks as well. If you're not aware, Simpleine does actually have her own YouTube channel with tons of videos from throughout her kittenhood. Um, so in the meantime, time if you're looking for some kitten cuteness you can hop over there it's youtube.com slash symboling the kitten thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you again soon and until then stay bookish bye guys